Welcome back to Public Radio, 89.9 FM, KG Paragrade Falls. Remember the number is 800-325-1565 or safely and securely on the World Wide Web at mtpr.org. And uh, we have the privilege of having the lucky Valentines in the studio today. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. And uh, it's such a pleasure to, to have you come in and play some live music. Uh, before we play our first song, though, I was kind of curious to... Um, know the origins of the band and the name the lucky valentines sean and i met playing music and i fell in love with him from across the room when he picked up that guitar and started playing i said to my mother i want that one <laughs> the guitar or the man <laughs> he, the man <laughs> his guitar is kind of beat up he obviously <laughs> loves it yeah, yeah and it didn't take us long to figure out we wanted to get married and we got married on valentine's day wow. uh, 2010 and now we're on our fourth child. Yep. Wow, fourth so, child. <laughs> so we know we're lucky. Yeah. We, we love our life. Yeah. And as far as the music goes, was that something that was hard to do when you first got together? No. For one, both of you are incredibly good singers. Oh, thank, thank you very much. So who would, you know, who's going to take the lead and who's going to do the second harmony? I mean, how, did, how do you decide these things? Well, I mean, it tends to just kind of fall in place naturally. Um, mm -hmm. Jamie's definitely a better uh, lead vocalist than I am, um, but it's 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 almost a if I write the song I sing it, and if she writes the song she sings it, and, and occasionally one of us will write something that the other one will sing. But for the most part, it's her, it's it's whoever wrote the song um, taking the lead, and then her forcing me to do harmonies or something <laughs> like that. I'm, I'm Which he's improved on a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but it wasn't his forte. Oh, I have a hard time with it. It's awful. But he can pick up the guitar and play a harmony like nobody's business. Mm. You know, that lead guitar of his is just mind-blowing. Yeah. So all originals? Why not um, um, We've done copy? We have done covers when we need to fill more time, but we mm -hmm. just really like bringing something new. Although I think the more we play, it's noticeable that people enjoy songs they already know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we put in some um, some covers just because um, Plus people if like it, them. Yeah, and, and if it's your own, nobody can accuse you of screwing it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, man, you're, that guy's rolling over in his grave when you <laughs> play that song. What's wrong with you? you know? But sometimes we find that our songs, you know, will kind of get maybe stuck in a rut of a little bit sad or it's harder to, to write our own happy songs. So sometimes we have to cover happy songs because they're they're out there. Because, yeah, the, all the we notice people from the audience starting to, to cry, dr drink really heavily and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and fall down weeping. And they just kind of stare off into space and you wonder what they're contemplating. Yeah. Like, maybe something. Yeah, something we can dance yeah, yeah. to. <laughs> now for a little hope. <laughs> We're gonna play a cover. <laughs> okay, speaking of music, um, I'd love for you guys to, you know, run a tune off for us. Uh, the first song we're gonna hear is a song called Santa Fe. Uh, either one of you want to comment on this song? It no? was inspired by a very <laughs> short moment in the actual city of Santa Fe, um, yeah. but the rest of it is based on other life experiences. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And we just, we really have a lot of fun playing this song together, mm -hmm. even though it's about lost love instead of good love. Yeah. The, the street singer's for real. That that happened. Yeah, we, that really we, happened. We didn't actually, nobody actually gave their heart to him. But, <laughs> but he was um, amazing. We saw this, he was like a 14-year-old kid in a little pavilion in downtown Santa Fe um, playing acoustic guitar, and he was playing You Fill Up My Senses by John Denver. Sure. But he was singing it in Spanish. And I'm not a big John Denver fan, but man, that kid it nailed beautiful. it. <laughs> it was amazing. Just like, Some of those street musicians. Uh, yeah. Seen yeah. that in Chicago, too. Yeah. So Santa Fe, and this was based actually off a real um, experience. Yeah, a moment in time and then past experiences from both of our just kind of love gone bad. Peace. 
trailing Spanish notes behind him. I watched him leave. Dark time and trouble have brought me down. firming up against me as we watch that big old moon burning out I've learned all your verses every word every note to every song You can say that it was good, that you love the way we love, but it's not true. Gave my 
heart to a street singer in Santa Fe. And that was Santa Fe. I have the Lucky Valentines in the studio. Again, the numbers to call 800 325 1565 or safe and secure on the World Wide Web at mtpr.org. And I will have to um, let our listeners know just a little bit of a tease that we actually have a nice little jingle that you guys have put together. And every time I say that, you guys laugh. But it's, it's nice of you to say that it's nice. It is nice. You're, you're nice. It is nice. Um, how about influences? Jamie, growing up, did you listen to a lot of disco music? Um, <laughs> actually, opera? a lot of classical music. Wow. Um, we were, I was a Suzuki violinist so a lot of classical music and then um a lot of country music that was you know what was on the radio when i was growing up uh some 90s rock but um what really influenced me was female singers like jewel and Alanis morris that i started just noticing hey these these guys are they're writing good songs of their own and singing them and um and then later on in my life patty griffin has been a huge influence i discovered her when i was maybe like 19 one of my sisters played her for me and i just fell in love with her she is one of the best writers i've ever heard and just vocally she's so powerful and see so yeah, i love i love patty griffin and emmy lou harris has been a, a big influence too my mom loved her as when i was a kid you know she'd listen to um wrecking ball and red dirt girl and i thought it was old person music for a long time but rediscovering <laughs> the album wrecking ball in my adult life has been incredible it's such a good album and we recently saw her at the mansfield center and it was just amazing i cried uh, are you from Great Falls originally? I'm from Fort, well, Fort Bend area originally. I grew up on a farm um, and came into Great Falls for groceries and violin lessons. And were you kind of pushed there. into that? I mean, you know, like the Jackson family kind of really uh, forced their kids to play. My mom type? was very, uh, not forceful, but she definitely made it happen. She um, got us into performing at the Senior Citizen Center at the library, anywhere that she she made a decision when we were little that anytime someone asked us to play, she would say yes. Oh. And she did that, and it was really good for, for me. What age it. are we talking about? Oh, I started violin when I was four, I think. Hmm. So for a while there, people probably wish they hadn't asked us <laughs> because <laughs> I have three sisters, and we were, so we would have been like eight, six, four, and two, and we all had our little, <laughs> you know, <Gosh>. violins, and <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it probably didn't sound very great all the time, but people were very... Um, generous to us and and gracious and sean how about your influences what did you listen to growing up i i mean initially growing up it was it was all you know pretty typical mainstream country from that era um i actually did a i did a lip sync of uh put yourself in my shoes by clint black when i was in elementary school um and and you know that that whole thing randy travis Garth Brooks, you know, um, all that, all that eighties country and, um, early nineties country and that sort of thing. And, um, I, I got into middle school. I got a, uh, a membership to BMG actually. And I, I bought a guitar magazine around the same time cause I, I decided I wanted to play guitar and, uh, how old were you? I was, I was 13, I think. Um, and I, I, I started listening to to blues music. Um, bought my first BB King record and started listening to that, and you know, um, just blew me up, changed my life. Uh, I, I never looked back. I guess um, got an electric guitar and started learning how to play it, and um, through that discovered songwriting um, with some friends and uh, you know um, all kinds of music. So, I mean, you want to talk about influences and that sort of thing. I mean, there's nothing I don't, I, nothing I hear mm -hmm. that doesn't influence me. I, I I listen to all sorts of music, and I'm like, man, I want I want a part of that. You know what I mean? From from Lady Smith, Black Mambazo to Sergio Mendez to you know uh, Bob Dylan and wow. Bruce Springsteen. You know, everything in between. I, I I I she'll she'll tell you I'll listen to pretty much anything, and and if I like it, I'll get a big dopey grin on my face and. <laughs> And disappear for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. So, are you from Great Falls too? Born and raised, yes. Did you growing up? Did you find it hard to find music? I mean, t today's technology, you go to the web, we got everything. But how about growing up in Great Falls, Montana? What what were you listening to? Uh, well, yeah, um, you know the guys, uh, 
Gary Gary Atwell down at Rod's Music and Sound was somebody who let me um, let me come play with him a lot, wow. and and through that I started to learn a little bit about about different blues artists that I'd never heard of, and that sort of thing. And then other than that, it was whatever was on the shelf at Hastings, you know what I mean, or whatever. I had a couple friends who could who could steal stuff from the internet wow. and, and whatever they were stealing, that sort of thing. I'd I'd listen to, but. Um, if I ever run for Senate or anything like that, I just realized it really incriminated myself. <laughs> um, 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 uh, accessory to piracy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, but but as far as finding new music, I mean, I guess I never really worried about it too much. I was just so happy to have what I had, mm -hmm. you know, which was, it, it seemed fine. It was like, it was, it's always felt like magic, mm -hmm. you know. Now, this next song is Poisonous Kisses. Uh, how about a little background on this, please, Jamie? Well, uh, this is a little bit of an angry song. Um, it's actually about a very dear friend of mine's sister, who's, they're friends of our family, and um, she, this song is my interpretation of what happened with her and a man she was married to for 10 years, who um, was an upstanding, you know, a person that people would look at and respect. It looked like they had a really good thing going, but he was very um, demeaning to her and, and very uh, abusive and so this song is kind of my reaction to that, just like, how dare you, and mm -hmm. and trying to get myself in her shoes and saying uh, what maybe she's been feeling for these years. No, but she did leave him, so. She did leave <laughs> him. Yes, she did. Okay, this is Poisonous Kisses by the Lucky Valentines. Again, the number 800-325-1565. Show your support for Montana Public Radio, KGPR. Such a treat to be able to have you come into the studio today, and let's keep this going. Thank you. Or on the uh, World Wide Web at mtpr.org.
Poisonous Kisses by the Lucky Valentines. And uh, yes, we have them in the studio today. And uh, we're here talking about, uh, well, let's continue with the conversation. I guess, are you guys playing out? Uh, um, they have albums out, things like that. What's going on? We have one album out, and we are working not as diligently as we should be on a second one. Um, but we've got the songs for it, and um, Matt Johnson at 4th Avenue Studios mm-hmm. has done some good work with us. Um, so we are working on the second album to be released at some point in this year. Um, and as the winter time isn't so busy for us playing wise, but we're starting to pick up gigs, which is exciting. It's always good to get back into it. And um, the warm season is always a little bit busier that way. If anybody uh, likes what they hear, though, and they're looking to to find out when or where we're playing or anything like that, they can like us on the Facebook mm-hmm. um, it's, uh, and we've gotten gigs through Facebook too so if you do like us facebook.com slash the lucky valentines we are we're open and ready for business absolutely <laughs> I noticed you brought a friend in to play with is it something normal that you guys expand Do you play with other musicians a lot or, or how does that work yeah my sister Jessica um, is the other violinist we have here today she's just been amazing at um, you know we write the songs but then she kind of writes her part and sometimes she needs a little bit of direction but she's just been awesome about coming up with fabulous parts um, that we just can't really do without. Um, but we also play with my stepdad, actually, Ross Reddick. He plays bass for us. And then Matt Johnson, again, um, plays drums from time to time. So sometimes we do a five-piece band. Sometimes it's just Sean and I. Sometimes just Sean and I and Jesse. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's kind of fun that way because we, we stand okay alone, but we really enjoy playing with other great musicians, and they just add so much to our music. So that's that's a really fun thing. Yeah. Every now and again, the we'll wind up playing with Ross at church too. Mm-hmm. He's a pastor up at the Methodist church up yeah. there in Fort Bend. Mm-hmm. I bet the acoustics are really Oh nice my there. goodness, yes. it's Actually, a beautiful room. the new yeah. album we're doing, we recorded some of the songs in the Methodist church because of the beautiful sound quality up there. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to have you back for open mic to bring you back All in right. and bring that CD Anytime. in and let's talk about the yeah. band again. Sure. Absolutely. Now this next song, Midnight Trains, this is an original composition. Who wrote it and why? I wrote it. Um, uh, I don't. I wrote it because I write songs. I guess it's a, it's sort of a silly thing to say, what but I do. but um, and there's a there's a few things that I, that are that are in it. Just like coming to a, to, a, to a new place in in um, in life and and looking at it and kind of missing old things and finding new things and and looking at the work that life brings to you and that sort of thing. And I don't know. I use the 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 train thing because we live in Fort Benton now. And the trains don't go through there anymore. And I'm from Great Falls, and there's a, I mean, there's a rail yard a mile away from my house, you know. And so I remember growing up, hearing that sound, hearing the hearing the the cars get shunted together, and and hearing the train whistle go, and and uh, I miss it sometimes. I really miss that sound, you know. And um, just I don't get to hear it anymore. And uh, so I just kind of use that as a as a theme for the idea of of life and change and loss and. Um, you know the, the 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 whole idea of of where I'm at with God, in 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 that whole journey. The lucky Valentines with midnight trains. Okay. Hold on. Got me the star in the cottonwood tree The frost in the fire and the blood in me My head rumbles with the time we keep In the calling of the midnight train to the moon Some have ears and some have eyes Some just how they're
God made the truth that set me free The light and the dark and the bloody deed Babies cry, angel sees Midnight trains all call We're back. Public Radio Week. Uh, I think you know the numbers by now. 1-800-325-1565 or on the World Wide Web at mtpr.org. Make sure you pick out uh, a nice thank you gift, too. There's a great list of thank yous, um, premiums. Just one small way of saying thank you for um, supporting us. And again, my name's Tom. We're here with the Lucky Valentines. It's Sean and Jamie Carrier. I understand you have three kids, one on the way. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminded me of the Tedeschi Trucks Band with uh, <laughs> what they're pumping out, too. Are those kids going to be musicians? Oh, we hope so. They yeah, definitely really love so. music. And, yeah, our little girls, They when, sometimes when we're playing, they say, stop. But usually one of them will go over to the piano and start banging on the piano. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other one will just kind of, you know, they'll sit with us and strum the guitar with us. And it's pretty wonderful. And our son, who's only eight months old, so he's not quite a musician, but... Um, when I was pregnant with him, uh, I remember a time, I don't normally play electric guitar, but I something was wrong with mine, and Sean handed me the electric guitar. And he literally moved his body against the guitar in a way I've never seen. Wow. Like, he, he pushed my stomach into the guitar. And I was like, all right, kid, you can play it. You'll wow. be great. Wow. So we're very much looking forward to what, what they come up with. Isn't that just neat, though, to create a little human being, and then they, yes. you see yeah. them develop? It's amazing. Um, okay. Let's go to the next song, uh, Breaklands. Who wrote this one? And I, I wrote this one as well. This is uh, it's just a, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a story song, I guess, about a guy uh, who who runs afoul of somebody and they wind up hunting him down. And um, I kind of like the idea of it taking place in, in the in the frontier days and in the, in the old days. You know what I mean? And, and in the breaks in, in, in that country kind of by Fort Benton where the, the ground starts to kind of break up and fall down to the river and that sort of thing. And, and you got all that yucca and sage and everything like that up there. I just, I just like the idea. It, it sounds sort of morbid to say I like the idea, but I, I like the idea of like this, the, the imagery of, of him getting chased down and, and trying to fight back and they, they win and they string oh. him up. And, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it, I mean, I never said it was a Careful. happy song. Sure. <laughs> Break Lands by the Lucky Valentines. Again, thanks for being here, guys.
be Shots ringing out from my pistol As the ground filled up with rain Cut me down with a great glance Being heavy Spanish bayonet Crooked sage Could loose this rope from my throat. Could loose my hands from these chains. Send home my soul to my mother. Leave my bones for the ravens. But I might fly. Place where the sun couldn't catch me. Okay, we're back. It's Montana Public Radio Week. This is um, where we come to you asking you for support. Keep us on the air for another year. We are a 5013C company, which means uh, we're a nonprofit, and we are truly, truly listener-supported radio. So again, the number is 800-325-1565, 800-325-1565. I'm not even sure if you're supposed to dial the one in front of these numbers anymore, or safe and secure on the line at mtpr.org. We're back here with the Lucky Valentines. Just heard a song called Breaklands. You talked about a little bit of inspiration. Where do you get your inspiration? Are you driving in your car writing on a matchbook, or do you actually set time, okay, tonight for an hour I'm going to go and I'm going to start writing, or what? Uh, it usually comes kind of like a bolt out of the blue for me. Um, I, I, um, I've i written lyrics down on, on napkins. I've, I've 
I've written lyrics down in specific notebooks. I mean, mm-hmm. I, there's there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Yeah. Sometimes it's structured, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it takes uh, months for a song to, to culminate and finish, and other times it comes out in 5, 10, 15 yeah. minutes. You know, it's Santa Fe, that, that song yeah. got, we wrote that song in 20 minutes in our living room, you know what I mean? And um, uh, there's other songs, uh, you know, that, that just, they take a lot more work and you got to yeah. pick away at them to figure out what's right and, and sometimes you we have an idea that we want we want to write a song about something and it's th- those are usually the hardest ones actually because to really want to say something you have to come up with the right words and usually i think both of us oftentimes start with a line that we just love and make a song around it mm-hmm. but if we want to say something it's a lot harder to put a whole song around a concept mm-hmm. you know to really to really say what we meant to say yeah yeah it's 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 pretty common for me to get to the end of a song and be finished with it and say oh i think this is about this yeah. <laughs> you know instead instead of being like hey i'm writing about you know this or i'm writing about that well how much do you tinker with a song once you get it done and do you ever go back and say you know what i want to change this in the middle or change the ending is that, is that yeah. often yeah yeah okay. i it actually depends too like yeah. like santa fe for instance it just really came like and that's one that we wrote together we hadn't written a song together for a while but that one just was it was just waiting for us mm-hmm. to sing it but yeah oh. some of them we go back often and you know change a lyric or change a just the mm. way that we're singing or do you get usually is it the lyrics that come first or the music that depends too oftentimes yeah. i'll get a line like a line with a melody and then the song kind of forms around it yeah um I'm, i don't really think very melodically <laughs> all, all that all that often so so a lot of times it'll it's the same though it'll start with a line and i and then <clears throat> Or it'll start with a guitar part, mm-hmm. um, and then I like sometimes sometimes I wind up with like a book full of lines, you know what I mean? And and I wait for a cool guitar part to come along, and then I try and like kind of cram them <laughs> together, you know. And 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 it's kind of scatter shot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, that's one way I do it. Other times it all comes at once. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about our last song here, "Lion in the Garden," "Lion in the Garden" too, not "Lying," but "Lion <laughs> in the Garden." Um, who gets props for this song? That's Sean. That uh, me again, I guess. Um, uh, that's that's just a song I I I lost a friend a few years ago, um, and uh, he took his own life, and um, so it was just it I, I guess that this song, sort of, winds up talking about. Uh, my reconciling that with with what I believe and and what I what I knew about him and what I what I know about me and and you know um, it's super personal in that way yeah. but um, I also think that there's kind of I, I, a, a generality to it that that keeps it from being too I don't know um, pers- <laughs> personal yeah yeah well um, how hard is that I mean it's a personal thing I mean that's got to be hard for you to actually put out there for other people to hear. I, I, you know, maybe that's why the lyrics are so ambiguous as they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really love singing it. Does it, it have kind of a healing effect for you, maybe a little bit? It's pretty cathartic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I there's there's all sorts of um, feelings that are wrapped up in that song and in that and in singing it and that sort of thing. But it's good to feel them. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay, Lion in the Garden, the Lucky Valentines, right here on Montana Public Radio, KGPR. Great Falls and the numbers 800-325-1565. We'll get to that jingle shortly. Or mtpr.org. And again, thank you very much. and 
stop the bullet and now they're gone they surround you if I could tell you sweeter I would walk the line and wash it clean We just heard Lion in the Garden with the Lucky Valentines, and we're so privileged to have them here in the studio today uh, for Pledge Week. How about some contact information? Someone might want to get a hold of you to book you guys. 
Um, the best way is actually on my cell phone, which is 868-6139, um, or through Facebook, facebook.com slash the lucky valentines. Um, and yeah, we're happy to, we're happy to play when people want us to. Mm-hmm. And go ahead, Shauna. I'm oh, sorry. No, that's, I was just, mm-hmm, and <laughs> she's right. <laughs> well, I've had the privilege of hearing this jingle before, and I have to say, I really love it. It's a great job, and I want to thank, thank you guys you. for doing that. We love public that's radio. Awesome. Thank you awesome. for what you do. <laughs> so again, the lucky valentines. Sean and Jamie Carrier, I think you guys are still in Fort Benton. Yes. And uh, certainly we will be hearing more from them uh, sometime down the road. Thanks for coming in from Montana Public Radio and Pledge Week. Thanks for having us. Mm, one, two, one, two, three, four. If, if you, you love, love your radio, now's the time to say. Go ahead, pick up the phone. You could make our day. Listeners like you and me keep MTPR alive. So call right now and pledge 142 or 5. And the number is MTPR. takes a map of my skin and fills it with holes I won't let him in I won't let him in and he and I capture the dark that comes from our minds bring it to our hearts and the sun on Trouble call.